Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to tell you about one of the investments that actually allowed me to leave my full-time job as a civil engineer. I was able to have the cash flow necessary to then dictate what I actually wanted to do with my time, and this one investment made it all possible. About 10 years ago, a friend of mine took me to some of these, uh, I guess you'd call them a guru type of camp. It was like an investment type of camp, but where they try to upsell you every time to do the next course in the next course. Well, I went to the first one with him and I was his guest so I was free and was turned on to some investments that I'd never really heard before. And so then we went to another one of them, actually paid money this time. And this is where I was introduced into mobile home investing. Not all of these seminars are for nothing. You get what you put into something and the vast majority of the people came out of these seminars and probably did absolutely nothing. I did. I did something with it. I got to know some of the people there and then started researching on my own. Turns out what they were saying was exactly correct. So I'm going to tell you how I got into mobile home investing. You may think, ew, mobile home. God, I wouldn't be caught dead near one of those. Well, if you think like that, you probably shouldn't do this. And there's a reason that a lot of people skip over this. It's because of that negative stereotype, and it's completely false. Don't get me wrong. There are some people that definitely give the mobile home industry a, a negative light, but the vast majority of it, you know, it's really good people that are living in this. They may not make as much as a lot of people, but, you know, it's an asset class that is very, very solid, and it is always in demand. It doesn't matter if the market's high or the market is low. Mobile homes are always in demand. At these courses, folks were saying that, man, you could get a mobile home for very cheap, you know, a thousand, two thousand bucks, or even sometimes free from the mobile home park owner. They just want to get rid of them. They want to get someone that will put the money into the home, turn it, and get a tenant in there. They just want lot rent. And there's a lot of opportunity on this. And so I thought about this and I actually started calling a bunch of different mobile home parks and they were absolutely Absolutely correct. There were mobile home parks out there willing just to give me the homes. Not only that, but they were willing to give me free lot rent for at least two to three months while I fixed up this home. And that's one of the big keys with this is lot rent can eat you alive. So you have to make sure, especially if you're buying it from a park owner, that you negotiate the lot rent side of it. My first mobile home I did buy from a park owner. I actually bought two mobile homes at the same time. So the first mobile home, it was a three bed, two bath. I fixed it up. It actually took me about three months to fix up. And I bought it from them for $3,400. And I ended up with a $9,200 total investment into this home. I ended up selling this on contract. So I owner financed it to people for five years, 60 months at $370 per month and a $1,000 down payment. This meant if the person stayed in this home, I would get a total of $23,200 on my $9,200 investment. Keep in mind, this was my very first home and I absolutely overspent. You're going to do that on your first flip of this. You're going to overspend, you're going to over improve and it's not necessary. As time goes on, your costs are going to be coming down because you figure a lot of things out as you go with this. But regardless, that first one is an education and you do pay for it. But in this case, I got all my money back. And if you do the math, you subtract out that $1,000 down payment and then you divide the rest of it by the monthly amount that I got, which is $370, it came out to 22 months was my break even point. That's where I got all of my money back and everything from that point on was profit. Well, when you're doing mobile homes, you have to remember that not all of these contracts are going to go all the way through. It's actually, in my experience, it's roughly two thirds of the contracts are going to fall through and you're actually going to get that home back. Also, in my experience, the vast majority of people stay at least two to two and a half years. So if you can make your investment back within the first two years, you're good to go. So this first home I got back after two and a half years. And therefore, again, my break even point was 22 months, which is less than two years, meant that I was actually making money at the time. So I got the, it back, they wanted to move, and I said, okay, as long as it's not in too bad a shape, 
I'll go ahead and take it back, forgive the loan, and just do the process again. I did this and I then sold it again for the exact same amount, 370 a month, 60 months, and a thousand dollar down payment. The good news was that thousand dollar down payment that I had paid for all of the renovations that I had to do this second time. And because I had renovated this home previously, most of that was still in pretty good shape. So, you know, you're gonna have to do some carpet or some paint or that sort of stuff, but usually that down payment gives you your money back. So you are instantly in the green the next time. So at some point that home is actually going to pay out, but I think I've done this with this particular home four times so far. I've got gotten it back, I fix it, I sell it. I get it back, I fix it, I sell it. And it's just a freaking cash cow. If you watched any of my other videos, I actually made two more mobile home videos. One was fixing up the outside of a mobile home, just showing you what I would typically do. And one was doing it on the inside of the mobile home. Shows all the befores and after and what I put into it. Well, that home, I spent $3,800 after I bought the home, as well as fixing it up. It was a three bed, one and a half bath. I'm gonna sell that one for $245 a month for 54 months, so that's four and a half years with a $1,200 down payment. And so again, a $3,806 investment at the end of it, assuming that they go through the whole thing is $14,430. That's a great return on investment. And this is repeatable. You can do this over and over and over again. When I started doing all of this, I did five of them in my very first year and I figured it at the end of it, I had over $100,000 worth of contracts out on these. So yes, of those five, two of them actually paid out completely with the very first person, but the other three, I got back. So I got to do it again. So that's what you gotta remember. As long as the person didn't burn down the house, it's a win if you get it back and it's a win if you sell it and they go through the whole thing. So how does all of this work? Why does it work? Well, it has to do with the mobile homes themselves. They actually have a book value, but generally speaking, they're actually worth less than that. A lot of the people that are selling them are either the park owners or they're the people within the parks. And the folks within the parks generally wanna get moved. So they just will take about anything for the home just to get out from under it. The park will sell them cheap because they wanna get the lot rent. Well, they don't necessarily have the crews or the time to turn that home. So they sell it cheap to you, give you some free lot rent because it doesn't actually cost them anything. They're not getting any money for that home anyway. So again, a couple months, it's a great deal for them. You put all the time and effort into it and then you sell it, they get lot rent, you get your payment and everybody is happy. When it comes to mobile homes, there aren't a lot of places out there that will lend on them. So let's say it's in the early 2000s or the 90s or the 80s or the 70s. There's really no one out there that's lending on those homes. So this is where you can add a bunch of value to this. That home that you may have bought for three or $4,000, you could actually turn around, sell it for a thousand dollar down payment, but offer financing over time. And you've actually increased the value of the home. And the whole reason is you've made it attainable. It's a monthly payment that the typical end user is used to making because they're generally renting. And again, I would never ever rent mobile homes. I just, it's not a good thing. I want owners because they are going to take care of that home a lot more and they're gonna stay there a heck of a lot longer. So your big value gain is the fact that you are owner financing it to them. So what was say a $5,000 home is now a $15,000 home. And there's nothing wrong with it. You are not screwing anyone. You are giving people an opportunity to get in a good, clean home at a reasonable price and they have a chance at ownership and you should see their eyes whenever they are signing the documents it's exciting for them to have that chance of ownership now let's get into how to find these homes so you can do it say with craigslist that's how i used to do it a lot when craigslist was really big now it's a little more on the facebook marketplace side of things again you can call around to all the different parks either talk to the park owner or you can talk to the 
the manager that's there. They're gonna know what's in their park, and a lot of times they're gonna have some homes for sale. Not only that, but when you're talking to them, you can figure out what their lot rents are, and then what they themselves are selling these homes for. So there's a lot of good information that you can get out of this. You can figure out what a typical three bed, two bath goes for, or a two bed, one bath. When I'm fixing these up, I try not to have any more than say $8,000 in a three bed, two bath, or $6,000 in a two bed, one bath. It's just one of my rules. Usually I try to at least get two to three times whatever money it is that I have in there. Another option is just go door to door. Just find some people that are outside and ask them, do they know anyone that is selling a home? What's interesting is once you start getting into this, you're going to automatically start talking to some of the neighbors. And so I had my very first home and I was almost done fixing it up. The neighbor guy came and talked to me and said he was thinking about selling his home. And so I was his first call whenever he went to sell the home. So I bought that home, which is right next door. Very, very convenient to do. And then I did the whole process over and over again. So don't be afraid to talk to the people in the community. They can be great assets with this. If they aren't gonna sell their home, they're probably gonna know someone else that wants to sell their home. However, before you buy a home, make sure to talk to the park because you wanna make sure that those folks that are selling you that home aren't leaving you with a whole bunch of back lot rent that needs to be paid. You need to know exactly what you're getting into. You can get underwater quickly with these if you don't know some of the simple tips to go. So talk to the park owner, make sure that they don't owe a bunch of money and make sure that they didn't sign a contract with the park that they would stay in that park for a certain period of time. I've had some homes that I wanted to move to my own park. So I was buying it from an individual and I wanted to move it, but I had trouble doing that because they signed some sort of a contract for reduced lot rent in exchange for say a five-year commitment that they would leave the home in. Basically meant that I couldn't buy that home. So due diligence is kind of a big one. I'll make a whole nother video on what you're actually looking for on the home itself. But for right now, we're mainly just talking the concept of it and some of the tricks and tips going along. Get to know the park manager as well. They are going to be a great asset. Either they are going to like you or they're going to dislike you. If they don't like you, get out of that park, go somewhere else. But if they like you, they also will turn homes on to you. Not only ones that the park may own, but they have their finger on the pulse of the community and they know when folks are wanting to leave. So you can be their first call whenever someone is leaving a home. You can buy that home. You already have the backing of the park behind. You can probably get a little bit of free lot rent from them while you're fixing it up. And again, it's just a win-win situation. You just rinse and repeat, just keep doing this whole thing. And you'd be amazed at how quickly you build up cash flow with this. And you're probably wondering, how do you fund this? Well, again, a lot of times you can get these homes for free. And if you have access, say, to a 0% credit card, one that you are going to make the payments on and you are going to pay it off before it goes really high interest. Make sure that's a big key deal there. Do not use a credit card unless you are going to pay it off. That's actually what I ended up doing with my very first one. I had the cash to do it, but I knew that I wanted to scale. And But since I could get 0% money on this, I might as well put some of that over here on this credit card pay little bits down as time goes on, scale the business up, and then let the monthly payments pay off that credit card. It doesn't take long to do once you start getting two, three, four homes. As I mentioned earlier, to make this successful, you want owners, you don't want renters with this. So you're going to have to have paperwork ready whenever you're doing it, your contracts, uh, your powers of attorney so that you can actually file it. You know, most people don't know, but at least in my state, a mobile home is actually treated like a car in the sense that it has a physical title. And to transfer ownership, I actually have to go to the tag office to do that. Well, you're gonna have to figure out what your state does. Some, you may have to go through the whole escrow side of it, just like what a typical single family home would be but others is gonna be just like what mine is. And no, don't ask, I'm not gonna give you any of my paperwork. Those are legal documents, very specific to my business. And they are something that you need to get that's state specific. Spend the money up front, contact an attorney, get the good paperwork that you need because you could end up in court, who knows. 
but you want that to stand up. In the early days of doing all of these homes, I actually did all the work myself. So no, I didn't give those a specific number as to you know $20 per hour or anything like that. I was putting the sweat equity in so that I could get it later on. But as you go, you can definitely build a team. You could scale this even faster if you had a team in place. You may tighten up your spread as to what you spend versus what you make, but you're still probably going to make money with this. And if you get too many of these and you start getting them all back at the exact same time, you're gonna get underwater quickly with the lot rents because most of the time you're doing this, you're gonna be buying them in someone else's park and you're gonna to have to pay their lot rent while you are turning that home. So make sure you keep some cash back to take care of those issues and again, if you're going to scale this up really big, have a team behind you that can quickly get on that home. If you let one sit too long, again, just 300 bucks in lot rent can just eat all of your profit. So stay on top of it. Let me know if any of you are thinking of doing this type of investment or if you are doing this investment. I'm curious to see what your experience has been with this. Just comment down below. Make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.